Our next speaker, continuing the theme of financing, is the CEO of the Clean Energy Finance Corporation, the body helping to cut Australian emissions by investing $10 billion into emission reduction technologies. Ian Learmonth is coming to us live from Glasgow. Ian, over to you. Good morning and welcome to the summit. Sorry I can't be there in person. I am in fact in Glasgow at COP26 uh, with the Australian delegation and very proud to be representing the Clean Energy Finance Corporation, uh, telling many people about the organisation and many deals that we have been involved in, our investments and how they're contributing <clears throat> to Australia's climate goals. COP26 offers a rare opportunity, opportunity for energy, finance and climate experts uh, to get together, share insights uh, alongside, of course, leaders of many countries uh, to learn more about the many possibilities uh, that exist to meet the critical challenge and, of course, undertake ambitious commitments on behalf of, uh, of the world. The, uh, the aim of COP, in the, in the words of the host, the UK, is to keep one and a half degrees alive. The CFC, Clean Energy Finance Corporation, is in its 10th year. It's the world's largest green bank. And we continue to play a vital role in accelerating investment in Australia's transition to net zero emissions by 2050. Uh, I think all Australians can be very proud of the CFC's unique model in driving investment to reduce emissions, supporting local industries, homegrown innovators, entrepreneurs, whilst delivering a positive return for taxpayers. I'm going to share my screen now to help me tell you about some of the things that we've been doing and some of the plans that we have for the future. So, leading investment delivering returns. We have $10 billion on behalf of the Australian Government. And over our eight or so years of investing, <clears throat> We have made cumulative commitments of, of approximately nine and a half billion. We've deployed capital of 7.4 billion. And in more recent years, we've had a significant amount of capital return to the CEFC. And um, at the moment, it's cumulatively two and a half billion dollars. So we were able to use that capital uh, for recycling to invest in further transactions. We do debt, we do equity, we invest in renewable energy, energy efficiency, and low emission technologies. We invest in startups, we invest in big, bigger companies, we invest in, in large scale projects. We're always focused on filling gaps in the market and crowding in third party capital. Over our life, uh, every dollar that we've put out the door, we've attracted something like $2.40. But that means that of all the, all the deals that we've done, all the investments we've made, the impact that we've had or the, the scale of the transactions that we've invested in uh, amounts to in excess of $33 billion. The, um, the government, of course, last week released its uh, long-term plan for emissions reduction. And uh, you will see there I've extracted uh, an image from the plan that the CEFC, alongside our fellow agencies, the Clean Energy Regulator and ARENA, are front and centre in driving down emissions uh, across the country and very much key to the government's plan in this regard. 40% of emissions in the, uh, the modelling to get to net zero uh, comes from uh, a block, and you'll see that in the graph, referred to as um, the Technology Investment Roadmap. And the CEFC invests in accordance uh, with the government's directive around the uh, tech roadmap. Uh, particularly the priority technologies, and we've, uh, you know, you've probably read about those and heard about those. It's clean, green hydrogen, uh, carbon, soil carbon, green steel, green aluminium, uh, storage, large-scale storage, carbon capture and storage. Now, we don't do carbon capture and storage, currently precluded under our Act. Um, but the, uh, uh, the other uh, priority technology that is uh, being referenced, of course, is ultra, uh, ultra um, low-cost solar. And uh, of course, we're a very significant player and have been for a long time in the uh, solar market, both at a household level and at a grid scale. Where is the CFC kind of heading? Where's it looking to, to go? Um, you know, we, we've very well known for our investments, 
particularly in project finance, wind and solar. But increasingly, as, as generation is built out, renewable energy generation is built out, it is important for us to, to turn our attention to grid-related investments to ensure, to ensure security and reliability, as well as storage. Uh, we continue to, to, in, to invest in the distributed energy growth. This country is, is just a world leader in it. We, we, and I think many of you know that something like three gigawatts of energy generation is installed uh, on Australian rooftops every year. So we've been working, uh, we've been working with that. We've been uh, involved in things like virtual power plants uh, in places like South Australia. We, we're, we're also very focused on the hard to abate sectors, which, um, which I know many of you uh, are focused on, and that's, it, that's sectors such as transportation, industry, agriculture, uh, importantly, and as flagged in the priority technologies, we have a dedicated team uh, focused on hydrogen, starting to make our first investments in that field. Um, pumped hydro storage, uh, large-scale batteries, we've been doing that both in uh, the famous Hornsdale battery, the big battery. Uh, we were there with first limited recourse financing there and more recently in the Geelong big battery. We're continuing to decarbonise the built environment and we are investing in um, the ag sector and soil carbon sequestration. I want to talk about uh, some of the deals that illustrate that. And uh, you can see the image there, some poles and wires. People probably don't necessarily think that CFC is an investor in that regard. But last year, um, uh, although, sorry, in fact, in this financial year, we uh, made our largest single transaction, $295 million investment with Transgrid to help them get Project Energy Connect up, a very large piece of infrastructure that's connecting New South Wales and South Australia uh, with the grid, and it will unlock uh, some gigawatts of, many gigawatts of uh, new renewables. So a very important part of transmission that the CFC uh, worked with Transgrid and built a created, structured product, if you like, a, a long dated, subordinated note uh, to help uh, Transgrid get its uh, get a, its business case over the line. So very proud of that transaction from last year. Uh, hydrogen, very important. Um, that we've uh, been the, the Australian government have uh, issued us with a direction to invest some three hundred million dollars into the hydrogen sector, what we call the Advancing Hydrogen Fund. We've made our first investment uh, some uh, some months ago in a company called Hisada technology company company coming out of the University of Wollongong, which is, um, it's in fact electrolyzer technology, which is uh, more, more efficient than many of the, or any of the other processes currently uh, out there and will accelerate the development of Australia's very exciting hydrogen market. We have in fact made <clears throat> another hydrogen investment recently in the transportation sector, which will, will go public on very soon, working closely with ARENA, on a number number of very large scale uh, electrolyzer transactions as part of their uh, hydrogen program, so uh, lots being undertaken in that regard. Transport, <clears throat> a difficult sector to abate. Um, quite recently, uh, we were involved in a financing which delivered Australia's first fully integrated electric bus depot. It's part of the New South Wales government's plan to electrify its 8,000 strong passenger bus fleet. Um, so we, <clears throat> in this first and in groundbreaking transaction, we were involved in the replacement of 40 uh, ICE buses with, with electric buses, as well as a whole suite of recharging infrastructure at a single site here in, um, in Leichhardt in Sydney. So really, really exciting transaction, and we hope uh, many more to go. Transportation is very important to the CFC. We've made a number of other investments, jet charge, the EV recharging company, we're a shareholder, significant shareholder in Jet Charge, continue to support that company. And more recently had a follow-on investment in the fast growing uh, e-bike company, Australian company called Zuma, which is just doing spectacular things both here and offshore in e-mobility. So uh, excited about the transport sector. As well as uh, as well as transport, we continue um, to support uh, capital markets. The, um, we've 
for a long time been helping uh, support the issuance of green and climate bonds. And um, this year we uh, launched a second uh, green bond fund. The first one we did with Altius, Funds Management Group. Uh, this second one, uh, very exciting with the Artesian uh, Group, a uh, one of, I think, Australia's first open-ended and actively managed uh, green and climate bond fund. Uh, we were a, a cornerstone investor in getting this particular fund up, and we were, uh, you know, supported investing alongside other uh, impact investing groups and people like Future Super. So we are very much and continue to be part of the uh, the capital markets uh, contribution um, to uh, to addressing climate. Agriculture, it's uh, a very important sector in addressing emissions. It's responsible for something like 12% of emissions. And uh, we more recently made an investment in uh, the second of our, of our ag funds. We, we had uh, the first fund that we invested in was with the Mira uh, Group, the Macquarie Group, a very large cropping fund. This one, uh, a smaller fund managed by Gun Agri Partners, and it's focused on different um, um, a, a mix of of, uh, of farming assets, both in the in the crop on, in the cropping sector and on the pastoral side. And it'll focus uh, its investment in underperforming small to medium medium scale sized farms and help lift their productivity and the way that, that their land is used. So, um, you know, we're working with with the ag sector. We're very conscious that that farmers are increasingly looking at reconfiguring the way they operate and, in fact, generating carbon credits, uh, ACUs, uh, to supplement their income and also drive down emissions. So exciting work being done in the ag sector. In terms of soil carbon uh, sequestration, which is uh, a priority technology, we're hearing more about it. We made an early investment in a company that was previously known as Soil Carbon Coat, now renamed as Loam Bio. And it is a, uh, a, an interesting, interesting ag technology company developing a microbial seed application uh, which boosts crop yields and help to retain water and sequester carbon in the soil. You may have read about it recently. It did a, it did a, a $40 million capital raise, very well subscribed and attracted uh, a number of very high profile investors. Mike, Mike Cannon Brooks, well, he's been a shareholder for a little while. Mark Benioff, the uh, founder of uh, Salesforce, and Toby uh, Lutke, who is the uh, founder of Shopify. So, a couple of very well known investors, a really important sector that I'm sure you will hear more about. Critical minerals, Australia has uh, the, you know, the advantage of being a resources powerhouse. And <clears throat> lithium is, of course, one of those critical minerals. And the CFC has been involved in supporting that sector for some time. We were a project financier to um, uh, Pilgrim Minerals uh, over there in the West. And more recently, we made an investment in a company called no Novalith, which is more a technology company that is, in fact, looking at a more sustainable way of extracting lithium uh, from the ground. It's, it's traditionally has been a high emitter in terms of extraction, although obviously a very important element to, uh, and particularly to the storage sector. So no, Novalith, a recent investment. Many of, uh, or some of those investments we've been making um, through our innovation fund. Um, some of you will know that we have a $200 million clean tech fund. So that's the uh, the green circle on the left hand side. On the right hand side, uh, that's a, an image, the the, uh, the green circle there, where I've got debt and equity, is our core portfolio, where we have a you know, the balance of our capital, where we're doing uh, you know, large scale investments, debt, equity, um, right across the economy. Uh, more recently, we have um, started to dedicate more time, effort and capital to um, growth capital investments. Um, so equity investments, not at such an early stage, like the Innovation Fund, and normally in that seed round, Series A, Series B. But the impact capital work that we're doing now is for companies that it, when as they're commercialising their technology a little bit further down the track, um, investments at scale of you know five to twenty million dollars. So, uh, and that that is a, a new business, a new activity for us. And we've made some um, 
our first investment uh, in that regard, and I thought I'd mention that just to illustrate the sort of things that we're doing, is in the, uh, the digital exchange company, Expansive, both uh, headquartered in, in here in Sydney, but uh, is an international business that hosts a raft of ESG products on its platform. Really exciting company, uh, likely to list in, in the coming year or two. And it is, it hosts um, commodities like Accus, our own, our own um, carbon credits here in Australia, but, but other, uh, other ESG type commodities, other voluntary carbon credits and so on. We're gonna see huge growth in that market, in the voluntary carbon market. And um, our investment, we made a $20 million investment, pre-IPO style investment in Expansive is an illustration of that new in initiative, our impact capital initiative. That's probably all we've got time for. Um, enjoy the rest of the summit. Um, I will um, see how I go with uh, the rest of the, uh, the COP, of COP26 and look forward to seeing you all back in Sydney very soon. Thank you very much. And that was Ian Learmont talking to us from Glasgow about what the CEFC is doing in terms of accelerating investment to create a low emissions economy.